This is not comfortable. I now realize that my methods to change this one hose may be flawed. This is my 2006 Subaru Impreza WRX STI that I recently purchased with 140,000 miles and some severely neglected maintenance. Today we're going to try to save some money. $330 on the valve cover gaskets. $330 is what the shop wanted to fix it. I'm going to try to do it myself. This is the second time I have done this on a Subaru, so by YouTube standards, I'm pretty much an expert. The oil cooler O-ring is also leaking. The turbo return line is leaking. Probably many other oil feed return suction lines are leaking. We're going to start on the valve cover gaskets and see how far we get. All we have to do is remove the intake and all the stuff on this side of the engine and the battery and stuff on this side of the engine to get to the valve covers. I'm going to use OEM valve cover gaskets, the tube plug seals as well, and billet half moon seals rather than the OEM factory rubber plastic ones because those tend to leak and um, crack after time. So it's only a couple items and um, it's quite a task to just change these few little things. I like to pull all the wiring harnesses that I can off of this little mount here and just bungee cord them out of the way. And this harness here looks like it goes down to a O2 sensor. I'm just gonna unplug it and droop it down because it's going really right across the valve cover where I need to be. So any space you can get easily, just go ahead and make room now. It's gonna make your life a little bit easier down the road. Well, we got basically everything out of the way. The coils are removed. There is two breather hoses here. And then just undo the bolts. I'm guessing it's been quite a while. So we'll just play it by ear. It looks like it's got a ton of crust and globbing of silicone around the top. So that'll be fun to get off and clean up. Now well, the valve cover made it off. Now we just gotta see about getting this gasket off. Somebody probably ran silicone around the whole thing as I've seen before. Oh yeah, someone ran silicone probably around the whole thing. Looks like OEM half moons. Ooh, there we go. They don't feel too hard and brittle like I was expecting. But maybe someone just changed them and didn't do a very good job. Now well, there's always going to be mysteries to this engine that we're trying to figure out. But if we look down at the head bolts, it doesn't look like they're studs. It looks like they're actually factory bolts. Right there, you see the green head bolt? That looks like it's a stock factory one. So I'm going to have to say this engine probably hasn't been cracked open. I'm not experienced enough to know otherwise, other than looks like factory head bolts. But who knows, somebody could have used stock ones. So we'll have to maybe look from the bottom end and see what the rods look like. Once the valve cover is out, the real fun begins because this entire channel around the whole valve cover and these spark plugs needs to be cleaned. So get yourself some long fingernails, get some picks, Get your wife's Q-tips, anything you can, a little brake clean, a scrub brush. That all needs to be as factory clean, if not better, as you can possibly get it. Unless you want to keep doing this job over and over again, I would suggest cleaning it as good as possible. I even cleaned the front of the valve cover because it was caked in soot and oil and grease, nastiness. Throw the valve cover gasket on. Throw the little half moon seals on a little bit of silicone and once you get the valve cover reinstalled you realize that you have a second one to do and you really get excited because you had so much fun doing this one before i get started on the driver's side valve cover gaskets this engine needs to be clean it needs to be detailed when i was doing the passenger side all oh, this crap you see down here looks like oil dirt mud power steering fluid coolant i don't know it's just look at the top of this someone's been off-roading or snow drifting i don't know what they've been doing to this car but all that stuff was getting knocked down and around the um, open cylinder head and the cams and stuff so i had to just be super careful every single time i was down there changing the valve car gaskets out so 
this needs to be cleaned before we can do anything else because I just don't like the dirt getting knocked down into the engine. Also going to change the o-ring around the oil fill tube you can see it's kind of crusty everywhere and where it bolts to the valve cover there is a lot of junk around here so i figure it's easy insurance and we're also going to do the uh, oil cap has an o-ring as well anything to seal up some of the oil i'm gonna have to clean all this and degrease it one step at a time my least favorite part of doing this job is getting rid of all the old gunk that somebody left from uh, the past. This valve cover gasket now needs to come off, and you can see it is quite a buildup of crap on there. So stuffed it full of blue paper towels to try to catch some of the dirt so it doesn't go into the cams and the head area. And I'm going to get some toothbrushes, some fingernails, and probably some plastic razor blades, a little brake clean, scotch bright, anything to get off all the silicone because it looked like somebody siliconed all the way around the valve cover. Thank you. And then we can uh, do the same for the next person. If there is any sort of takeaway advice from this video that you will gain, it is right here. This blue paper towel I have shoved in here. I clean the entire surface all the way around the head, getting ready to put silicone on it, and then I realized there was a pool of oil that was leaking coming out of the cylinder head right across the meeting surface where the valve cover gasket was going to go. So make sure you clean that well. You can shove a paper towel in there and clean it out because, like I said, it just kept dripping oil across where I was gonna put the valve cover gasket. New O-rings on the oil fill tube and the oil cap, so that should be sealed up nicely. Use a little bit of grease. If you know what this is, you might be a moto guy. Valve cover removed, cleaned. The surface all the way around the head has been cleaned several times. No silicone, no grease. Everything's ready to go, just need a little bit of silicone. The oil return line is a three inch hose that is a nightmare to get to. Um, probably gonna have to drop the down pipe. There's an up pipe over here that gets in the way. I can't even show you. So how am I supposed to get my hands in there? It's basically on the other side of the turbo between the up pipe and the down pipe, just cooking itself. It's a little piece of rubber. Why Subaru made this rubber? Well, that's so that you can uh, take your car in every few thousand miles and get it replaced because it cooks, it gets hot, it gets cold, it expands, it gets oil soaked, the heat destroys it, and then you have to replace it. Things had to be removed. Top mount intercooler had to be removed. The down pipe is laying on the floor down there, all to get to this stupid little hose I will have to go somewhere else to show you where it is. From under the car, you can see a little bit better. There's the hose with the two clamps on it. To the right is the up pipe. Even if that's out of the way, it's still going to be a pain to change. So I think we're going to have to drop that for sure. But I'm just trying to get to that little hose right there. Nobody reminded me that to take the up pipe out, you really got to take the exhaust manifold out too because you loosen the up pipe and it has nowhere to go. It just slams into the exhaust manifold. So more parts are coming off immediately. You all forgot to remind me how freaking heavy these things are too. I guess cast iron, I mean, what was I expecting? But at least I can get in here and do a little bit more inspecting and cleaning. Yeah! Up pipe. Removed. Why, so much work for such little gain. I now realize that my methods to change this one hose may be flawed. There's the culprit. You little hose cause so much problems. It might not even be leaking. It doesn't look great. The clamps don't even look like they're in the right spot, but at least we can see it now. We just gotta somehow get in there and remove it. This is not comfortable. But it's the only way that I can actually get two hands on this turbo return line. That's how I could 
tighten it and untighten it, loosen it, replace it. And then somebody mentioned, why don't you just remove the turbo? Well, yeah, I guess so. As I'm laying up here straddling the engine, I can't help but see all this oil crap sitting up here next to the turbo that's coming out of the air oil separator. I drained the line that was going uphill, got probably a tablespoon of oil out of it. But this here, it is a mess. Under the turbo, there is just tons and tons of leaks. That fitting there, I don't even know what fittings go where and how to undo all this because everything is so oiled soaked. So I think I need to pull that out, see what's going on. That little oil in the turbo. But I believe a lot of this oil is leaking down to where I am working on the oil drain tube, the oil feed lines, oil return lines. And I don't know if they're leaking exactly, but this is definitely a muddy, oily mess. Well, I got this fitting out of the top of the block. Super oily, gross nastiness. Have some milky, sludgy air oil separation stuff going on in there. And this thing just pulled right out of there. See the hole where the sludge is in? So that thing is nice and nasty. It's only a couple inches long, but it's like crimped on there. So I'm not sure if that's a hose that needs to come out, but this fitting just slid right out of there. So if it's a hard hose now, because it's been so hot and nasty, maybe that's the problem, but I'm not really sure how to get it off the top of the block without doing some more research. After fighting with this hose for, I don't know, an hour, I finally got it out. I do not like these clamps. Removing them is a nightmare, especially when the part that you're supposed to pry up with the screwdriver is buried up against the block and you can't get to it. So busted it out, this thing is ah, about as hard as a rock. So I'll have to replace it. It was a disaster. So I also have to clean up the fittings. These hoses are all hard as rocks as well. Can't even pry them off the actual fitting that goes into the block. Running around to several parts stores, nobody had a universal hose that would uh, not melt from the oil vapors except Subaru. I can't believe they had it in stock. Yeah, it's about 15 bucks, but when you need something, you're gonna pay for it. New hoses slid into place and cleaned up so I can tell if it's leaking again. I don't know what to do about clamps because there is no space to get anything in there. Without taking off the turbo, I gotta figure something out. The up pipe is in and loosely bolted into place until I can get the manifold and the down pipe installed. But before the down pipe goes in, I found this in my pile of stuff. So this bracket, I'm going to bolt to the back of the turbo and put it on because why not? Let's stop a little heat. Would you look at the condition of that oil cooler? Wow, you can't even see that it's supposed to be like a copper color. Uh, I do have the O-rings for it, but I don't know if I don't want to drop it because you lose about a gallon of coolant when you do that, and I don't want to mess with that right now. I might just try to loosen the bolt and see if I can slide in a new O-ring and at least clean this up in the meantime until I can drain the coolant and do it completely properly and clean it out, but this front timing cover is probably going to have to come off anyways because it looks like it's leaking from a few other spots as well, but this needs to get cleaned up. Little elbow grease, a few minutes later, you can actually see some color and some silver. Um, so I learned to just start cleaning before I do the repair because as I do a repair, especially if it needs to be clean O-ring, uh, dirty, gritty, nasty, sandy oil, it's not the best to helping solve oil problems with new O-rings. So clean it up first. I'll pop off the oil filter and the oil cooler and change the O-ring. Ooh, super tight. Wow. That's why I don't like this hex key on the bottom of filters because people think it's a head bolt. And it's not.
What is this thing? 24 millimeter. Yowza. Okay. Not even barely tight. That explains a few things. Not much room in there. I think if we loosen this pipe up here, I might have enough to bend it down out of the way. The 10 mil off this water pipe, and I can pretty much look at the top of the oil cooler. But you can't because it's freaking dark. Yeah. There it is, O-ring. And a bunch of more nastiness. 40 foot pounds was definitely not how tight it was, probably why it was spewing everywhere. When quality counts, OEM blue oil filter. We're not going to use a wrench to put it on this time either. That way we can get it off next time. I guess since I'm down here doing all this, I probably should just do an oil change. What's one more bolt? This is the drain plug that came out of the car with a copper washer on it. Not right. This is the OEM Subaru washer that should come with. I also picked up a magnetic drain plug washer or drain plug from Subaru. Not sure if it's right for the car. It is a couple threads shorter than this one. So I don't know. I'm still contemplating if I want to run it or not. Now that everything has been installed except the top mount intercooler, I just realized this will be the second time that the downpipe has to be unbolted and loosened because the first time, well, I forgot the gasket. Second time, I um, realized that the bolt underneath doesn't really bolt on unless the downpipe is loose and slid back. So now that we're on the second second time of removing the downpipe, the downpipe support bracket on the transmission at the bottom cannot be installed while the downpipe is all bolted in. So, gotta remove the heat shield, loosen up the downpipe. Might as well get started for the third and final time. I hope. It would appear the car is almost back together. However, this bypass valve here, these bolts are stripped and the threads are destroyed. Somebody just can't seem to torque things down properly. So, I got a longer bolt ghetto i know i don't have the right tap for this so i just used a little dremel and cut some little relief cuts in this bolt and i'm going to take the intercooler off chase the threads and if i have to i can drill those out and helicoil them oh or i might just light the car on fire i haven't decided yet I am taking a break from fixing oil leaks on this car. I have been laying under this vehicle 9, 10 o'clock at night for weeks now, chasing down about three oil leaks. There is one more that we have to do later, but we're gonna remedy that at a later time. Like I said, I need a break. Let me show you what we fixed so far. Driver and passenger side valve cover gaskets have been changed along with the billet aluminum half moon seals. The world's worst turbo return line down here in the abyss of the engine has been successfully hopefully changed. The oil cooler o-ring underneath the vehicle has also been replaced. Now that those three oil leaks have been fixed, let's see how much money I saved by doing this myself. Okay, the shop wanted $270 to replace that oil return line. That thing was a nightmare, but 270 bucks, thank you, I'll keep that. $330 to replace the valve cover gaskets and labor. They also wanted $270 to replace the oil cooler O-ring. That's a savings of $870. I probably have less than $150 in parts on those three things. Yes, it took me a long time to get those done. Little bits here and there, but they're finished. Yeah, I have one more oil leak to fix, but parts are on the way. And if you enjoy watching me torture myself fixing this high mileage and neglected 2006 STI, please subscribe. Leave me a comment down below, hit the like button, and I will see you next time.